Good morning to all the viewers joining us on the show today is Mayuresh Joshi to discuss the movers and shakers in trade though the markets are pretty much flat but we are above those 18,300 levels. Mayuresh, good morning and welcome to the show. Morning and always a pleasure to be on your show. Thanks. Mayuresh, let's start with the Dr. Reddy's. The company reported numbers. What's your first take and what would you advise an investor to do? So obviously, I think the disappointment that has come through in terms of the U.S. sales is specifically relevant, contributing to the deacceleration that we've probably seen. Expectations largely are now getting built in in terms of the pipeline that Dr. Reddy has for the better part of the next financial year. Now, going by their con call uh, uh, last time around, they were expecting around 25 odd product launches to come through for FY24. Uh, a majority of those uh, in high complex generics, which means the margins for these products are going to be relatively higher. At the same time, the backward integration or the molecules needed manufacturing these new, new niche segments or new niche products, uh, uh, 60 to 70% is probably going to get uh, integrated uh, locally as well. Uh, therefore, I think the kind of margin performance that one really expects from Dr. Reddy going forward. Uh, should be sustainable between the 24 25 percent mark or even a little bit higher if these product approvals and uh, uh, come through on a timely basis. So, yes, I think the kind of reaction that has come through in terms of uh, the US sales, uh, uh, limit being a large part of it, uh, I think that should show signs of normalization that new approvals come through. And the market has probably taken uh, uh, the deacceleration de uh, to a large extent. Uh, in terms of the price action as well. Uh, but to a large extent on the only lens trade the bound moving app, is anybody going to have hold on? Going on another uh, company that is focused from the pharma pack uh, is a Novartis India. They have reported a profit versus a loss. Uh, what do you make of the no of Novartis? Yeah, so MNC pharma companies are uh, slowly and strategy coming back into favor here mm. to a large extent. Uh, the performance was, uh, uh, wouldn't say a turnaround, but yeah, it was obviously working on a low base on uh, uh, last year's uh, annualized performance as well. And therefore, I think the kind of product mix that they've got, uh, I was hearing the Novartis management uh, out as well, a lot of MNC pharma companies as well, uh, plan to introduce uh, more products, more drugs into the Indian markets, a few of the blockbusters that they've got globally as well. And therefore, the kind of expectations that one has, uh, uh, cash rich balance sheets, uh, relatively stronger cash flows, and better numbers to exhibit. Probably an uptick uh, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, numbers reactions on the world is, uh, uh, but a large extent that you need to be very, very selective when it comes to the pharma. Right. Another one coming in is a Sanofi where the board has gone ahead and approved the demerger of its consumer healthcare business. What would this actually mean for investors? And the stock is up around 4.5% as well today. So again, I think any news related to demergers uh, creates value unlocked for investors. Uh, uh, because if one part of the business is not doing well, I think it keeps a drag on the console numbers and the other part does exceptionally well and keeps on supporting the console numbers as well. Uh, so demerger, good news, uh, because I think consumer businesses uh, are expected to be very well in India. But even the standalone, as I said, for a lot of these MNC pharma companies, uh, the stability in numbers is something that one can really expect. Uh, so I think... Uh, more news flow at this point of time, creating a positive impact. Right. Mayuresh, moving on, you have a Hindalco, uh, which is moving in trade today, and this is on the back of Novellis numbers. Uh, what do you make of Novellis numbers, and how are you viewing the space? Uh, so, to a large extent, I think the kind of expectation that one has in terms of uh, the EBITDA performance part, mm -hmm. that, uh, that should show signs of improvement in the second half, expecting around $500 to get reported. Net debt reduction has been significantly lower. Uh, the beverage can market should hold up. Uh, pricing still remains uh, a question mark, and therefore uh, uh, the recovery should slowly and steadily start coming through in the second half uh, for Novellis in particular. Uh, Apex is a relatively higher side compared to last year, and that might have impact on the free cash flow as well. So I think a steady improvement expected in Novellis is uh, number uh, from the second half. Right. And what about Ratnamani Metals? Strong performance in the fourth quarter. The stock is up around 10% in trade already today. Uh, what would you advise an investor to do? Good levels to enter, taking how the metal pack is panning out from here on? Uh, so for Ratnamani in particular, on the only lens, it 
uh, is about uh, key pivot level. So small pullback on low volume with this but I think it's coming out of the stage one base as we call it, which is very, very strong. On the numbers itself, uh, numbers have been very, very strong. Uh, uh, the kind of business segments that they operate out of, stainless steel tubes, carbon steel tubes, uh, uh, getting into uh, ERWs as well, and a small component coming through from the seamless pipes as well. Uh, Apex uh, for, uh, from the government side, order will uh, expect it to be significant. Uh, uh, the delivery in terms of the operating performance has been strong, expected uh, to continue doing so. And therefore, the reported EPS for this fiscal uh, has been spectacular for that company. Uh, can they continue this volume growth going forward along with a stable market trajectory, creating an operating leverage? Uh, if numbers are to be seen over the last two to three quarters, I think the trend might very well continue. And looking at the large big picture in terms of capex spend, more orders from their way, margin authority orders as well, I think that trend might very well continue. So yeah, I think it's very, very positive on the audience. Right. And very lastly, if you see the city gas distributors, good set of numbers that have been reported. Uh, what should someone do with this space? Uh, so, yes, better than expected numbers for city gas uh, distribution companies in general. Uh, what you've also seen in terms of gas prices getting revised, uh, obviously, I think the downward provision will mean uh, better competitive in terms of other fuels available and therefore the volume activity might show significant traction. The government intent in terms of taking this to 15 odd percent from 6 percent means that there is significant scope in terms of uh, most players uh, within the spaces, uh, within the listed space to be particular, to probably expand their geographical territories. Uh, and with gas prices expected to remain low and benign for the better part of this financial year, expectations of volume growth coming back mm. will lead to operate on that balance sheet. So yeah, in the moment of probably stays going. Right, so I think that's going to be a space we should be watching out for as well. Thank you, Mayuresh, so much for joining us on the show and giving us those views with regards to the stocks that we've discussed so far. It is going to be an interesting day of trade as well, taking expiry uh, into consideration from a technical perspective. Thank you, stay safe and speak to you soon again.